Hey everyone, it's Got Hold E uh, with Magic, and I'm going to start today a series of videos on historical methods in mathematics. I think there's some really interesting stuff there, um, precursors to modern methods and unique techniques that are really talked about. Uh, today, I want to inaugurate it with something from one of my favorite mathematicians, Pierre de Fermat, and his method of finding the equations of tangent lines to curves, and also for minimum and maxima. Um, so we're going to call this Fermat's method derivatives. Now, Pierre de Fermat was a uh, mathematician uh, based out of Toulouse, France, and by trade he was actually a lawyer, um, and he made his living as a lawyer on a French court and later a judge. Um, but mathematics was his real passion in life. He did a lot of it in his free time, corresponded with the big names of the time prior to dispute with René Descartes, worked uh, with Father Mercine of Mercine Prime fame, uh, stuff like that. Um, and he's really famous for his work in number theory, Diophantine equations, um, the famous Fermat's Little Theorem, the, the, the incredibly famous Fermat's Last Theorem, both due to him. Um, but I want to talk about some of his work in analysis that's not talked about often, but he made important contributions that are the precursors to calculus. Okay, so h historically, huge problem here. Uh, let's examine a general equation, say a parabola and the positive quadrant, okay? A and we want to know, first of all, where are the minimum and maximum value? A and perhaps for a parabola, this isn't an interesting question, but certainly you can imagine a cubic equation or something like, okay, like this, where you want to know where that minimum is and you want to know where that maximum is. Um, and physically, this has a lot of applications with real problems. Um, but also, you want to know the slope of the equation at every point, right? You want an effective method of drawing tangent lines to curves. Remember, a tangent just touches something at one point. So, uh, you know, circle is the really famous example, or here, tangent line. Tangent line just touches at one point. Uh, and with that, you can find the slope of the graph at a given point, which is, again, physically useful and mathematically interesting. So, um, let's examine, like Fermat did, some point x, and it's corresponding f of x. What Fermat does is he puts some small change in this value of x, which we'll call epsilon. We'll make larger than small for the purposes of demonstration. And, and there's its f of x. And he examines this new point, f of x plus epsilon. Now, Fermat borrows from Diophantus, who is a Greek geometer, um, and we'll probably talk about a lot of his work in the future here, too, okay? I'm trying to give you an idea of uh, broad mathematical culture as much as I can through these. Um, Diophantus comes up with the notion of ad equality, which is that two things are, are approximately equal, and so close to equal that they're basically indistinguishable. And this is what Pia does. He ad equates, is what we're going to use, f of x and f of x plus epsilon. So we have f of x is add equal to, that's the symbol, you might recognize that as the top of the congruence equality from geometry, f of x plus epsilon. And now we're going to examine this in the quadratic case, um, x squared, because it's very nice. So x squared, right, the original f of x, is add equal to, well, we have x plus epsilon squared is our new function. So then x squared is add equal to x squared plus 2x epsilon plus epsilon squared. Simple binomial expansion there. Um, and now he's going to subtract over uh, x squared. So 0 is going to be add equal to 2x epsilon plus epsilon squared. Now, what we have here, right, here's the old y, and by taking it away from this, we have our new y um, from the epsilon. And so when we have epsilon, x plus epsilon, the new y we get is this. So this is our change in y. Um, mathematically, the common term for change is a delta. So this is delta y. Okay? Um, and let's think back to slope for a minute here and why we're doing this, right? Slope is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. So the change in height with respect to the change in distance. So, the tangent at every point would be what gives us the change in y. What, what we want is the, the change in y with respect to 
the change in x. Well, what's our change in x? It's just epsilon, right? So now, p of f of r divides through by epsilon. So now we get uh, 2x epsilon plus epsilon squared over epsilon, right? And that delta y over delta x, okay? Cancel out epsilon um, from both here. So now 0 is going to be add equal to 2x plus epsilon. And here's where he makes the observation that's going to be controversial for a very long time. And it isn't really put on rigorous grounds, in fact, until uh, Bolzano and Weierstrass work out rigorous definitions for limits. He says, epsilon's small. Epsilon's so small, epsilon might as, not, might as well not even exist. So, we can cast out every term that has an epsilon left in it. Disregard them. Um, and this would be criticized by the likes of Bishop Berkeley, as the ghost of departed quantities, um, and would be formalized by Leibniz and Newton as an infinitesimal. But we can proceed in a naive manner, um, so 0 add equal to 2x. And that is, in fact, the derivative of uh, the equation x squared. This right here is going to give me the slope of that equation at any point. Um, and, and this is the same thing that's realized later by John Wallace, Isaac Barrow, and then finally the uh, founders of calculus, uh, Isaac Newton and Leibniz, Gottfried Leibniz. Um, and if we want to find the minimum or maximum value, uh, the, the critical point here, we can just divide through by 2, right? Um, so 0 is that equal to x because that solves the equation. And so at 0, wh wh which makes sense on this, right? 0 is the minimum value we have a critical point. Um, and the, the general case here, you, you, you might recognize essentially what we've done without the deltas and everything. Leibniz came up with this wonderful notation, which is uh, dy dx, right? This infinitesimal change in y with respect to the infinitesimal change in x. Um, and so you, you see here the genius of Pia de Fama. Um, it's a really neat method. Um, be, and Today, we'd formalize it as the limit, and I hope this is familiar to a lot of you, um, as epsilon tends towards zero, right, of f of x plus epsilon minus f of x over epsilon. And you see that's what we did here. We took, uh, subtracted over f of x from f of x plus epsilon, because that gives us the change in y, and take it with respect to that change in x. And there's where your modern notion of the derivative comes from. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, next time, I think we're going to talk about Fermat's method of integration.